In this example problem, we're going to find the nominal strength of our column uh, if our column is loaded at an eccentricity of 15 inches from the center. Um, so this is going to cause an axial load, and it's also going to cause a moment uh, equal to P times our eccentricity. So we have a moment and an axial load in our column. Uh, you can see the, the axis at which we're bending about, um, and since our, we have a symmetrical column, the plastic neutral axis is located in the uh, center of the column. So our combined moment and axial load are going to cause a state of strain in our section, uh, which is going to result in stresses and forces in our section. Um, so what we'll do to locate our neutral axis is uh, we'll use a trial and error method. Uh, so we'll start by assuming that our extreme compression fiber is equal to 0 0.003, which is our ACI assumption. We'll make a guess for C. So we'll guess how uh, deep or, uh, our neutral axis is. We'll calculate the stress in both of our uh, tension and compression steel. We'll calculate our associated P and M. And then we'll calculate our E um, equal to M over P and see if it equals the E that we're given, 15 inches. And then we'll repeat this as many times as we need to. Some of the properties that we'll need uh, for this problem are our beta 1. So our beta 1 is equal to 0.85 minus 0 0.05 times F prime C minus 4, if we're doing in KSI, and then greater than 0.65. So we can see for 4 KSI, our beta 1 is going to just be equal to uh, 0.85. We can also find our D equal to our overall height 20 inches minus 2.5, which we're given is the distance from the outside to the center of our bars, will give us a D of 17.5 inches. And then our D prime we're given is 2.5 inches. We'll start by setting our C equal to 10 inches. So um, equal to our plastic neutral axis. So we'll need to start by finding our A. So A equals 0.85 times C 10 inches equals 8.5 inches. Uh, next, we can find the stress in both our compression and tension steel. So our uh, FS prime will be 0 0.003 times 29,000 times C minus D prime over C, uh, which will give us uh, 65 KSI. So we know we're yielded, so we'll use 60 KSI here. Then we'll have our FS, so 0 0.003 times 29,000 KSI times 17.5 minus 10 over 10 uh, will give us 65.25, but we know that that's greater than 60, so we'll use 60 KSI for our tension steel as well. We'll next need to find uh, the magnitude of all of our ax or all of our force components. Uh, so first, our compression block. So we'll have 0.85 times 4 KSI, times beta 1, times C, times B, to give us a compression force of 346.8 kips. Then our uh, compression steel, we have two number 9 bars, which gives us 2 square inches, times 60 KSI, where yielded is 120 kips. And our tension, we have 2 square inches yielded, 120 kips. So if we combine all of these, then we'll get our P equal to 346.8.
kips. We'll next find our moment. And our moment, we will sum about our plastic neutral axis. So we need to find all of our lever arms since we have all of our force components already. All right, so uh, our lever arms, first the lever arm for our concrete is just our plastic neutral axis depth minus A over 2, uh, which will give us 5.75 inches. Then we'll have our Y for our steel, 10 inches minus 2.5 inches, gives us 7.5. And then 17.5 minus 10 equals 7.5. So moving forward, when, during our next checks, our steel um, lever arms are not going to change. So we'll always have our steel lever arms at 7.5. Uh, the only lever arm that's going to change is our 5.75. Um, so that'll be the one that we uh, update during each iteration. So plugging all of these values into our moment expression, we'll get our moment equal to 5.75 times 346.8 plus 7.5 times 120 plus 7.5 times 120, which will give us a moment of 3,794.1, and our units are kip inches. Our eccentricity is then going to be equal to our moment over our, our axial load. So 3794.1 kip inches divided by 346.8 kips will give us an eccentricity of 10.9 inches. Uh, so this is not equal to. Um, the eccentricity that we uh, have in our column 15, uh, so we need to keep going um, and make another guess for C. Since our uh, axial load P is too large in relation to M, uh, which is leading to our, our lower E, um, we'll need to reduce our C uh, during our next guess. The next guess that we're going to make is C equal to 6 inches. So we'll need to first find our A. So A is 0.85 times 6 inches, uh, which will be 5.1 inches. Uh, then we can find our stress in our compression and tension steel. Uh, so 0.003 times 29,000 KSI times 6 minus 2.5 over 6 will give us a uh, stress in our compression steel of 50.75, uh, which is OK since we're less than yield. Then we can find the stress in our tension steel, so 0 0.003 times 29,000 times 17.5 minus uh, 6 over 6 uh, will give us 167. So this is much greater than um, yield. So we know we'll be yielded um, in our tension steel. We can next find all of our force components. So first the uh, force component in our concrete, 0.85, F prime C, 4 KSI, beta 1, 0.85, times C, 6 inches, times our B, 12 inches, gives us 208.1 kips. We can find our compression force, uh, 2 square inches, times 50.75 KSI, gives us a compression force of 101.5 kips. 
And then our tension force is our two square inches of tension steel times 60 KSI. It's going to give us 120 kips tension. So uh, plugging these in and finding our P, uh, we'll find our P to be 189.6 kips. Our compression uh, force lever arm then uh, in our concrete is going to be our 10 inches minus our A, 5.1 inches over 2, which will give us a lever arm of 7.45 inches. Then now uh, we can find our moment. So taking all of our forces times all of our lever arms. So 7.45 times 208.1 kips plus, remember our steel lever arms are the same, seven and a half, half inches times 101.5 plus seven and a half inches times 120. And this will give us a moment at this point of 3,211 kip inches. So then we can find our eccentricity. And our eccentricity is our moment, 3,211 kip inches, divided by our axial load, 189.6 kips, which will give us an eccentricity of 16.9 inches. So we can compare this to our 15, uh, which is our actual eccentricity, and we can see we can, uh, we're higher. Um, so we overshot uh, our C. So we need to now increase our, our C a little bit. If we were to iterate a few more times, uh, we could get um, our actual C. And uh, what we'll find is our C is close to uh, 6.86. Um, so this is going to be the last step that I'm going to, to calculate here. Um, so first we'll find our A, so 0.85 times our C, 6.86. And once again, if you are doing this um, by hand, uh, you may need or you would need a few more iterations to, to get here. Um, you could also set up an Excel sheet and uh, just use a solver function um, to find your, your exact C. Um, so anyway, you can find your A. So your A is 0.85 times 6.86, so 5.83. And then our F prime S, 0 0.003 times 29,000 KSI times C. 6.86 minus 2.5 over 6.86 to give us an F prime C of 55.3 KSI. Um, we'll find that our tension steels yielded, so I'm not going to write this out again, but FS is going to equal our FY 60 KSI. Then we can find all of our force components, so 0.85 times 4 KSI times beta 1 times B, or times C, times our B, uh, which will give us a compression force component of 237.9 kips. Then we can find our uh, compression steel component 55.3 KSI times 2 square inches uh, to give us 110.6 and then 2 square inches times 60 KSI to give us 120 kips. We can find our concrete component lever arm so 10 inches minus 5.83 over 2 uh, to give us our lever arm of 7.09. And then we can finally find our moment. So our moment being 7.09 times 2 
37.9 plus 7.5. Remember our lever arms for our steel remains the same because we're always summing our moment about our plastic neutral axis. So 7.5 times 110.6 plus 7.5 times 120. And we'll get our moment to be equal to 3,414.6. And we can finally find our eccentricity. And this is, sorry, kip inches. Uh, so 3414.6 kip inches divided by our axial load, uh, which we can find uh, by summing all of our force components and remembering that our tension is negative, uh, 228.5 kips, so dividing by 228.5 will give us an eccentricity here of 14.95. Um, so if we were iterating, we'd say that this is uh, close to our um, given eccentricity of 15 inches. So we would have the uh, total load that our, uh, our column could hold. If we were to repeat this exercise for several different values of C, um, we could start developing uh, a plot where we plot our axial load uh, versus our moment. Um, so is, or which we'll call a moment axial force interaction diagram. Um, these interaction diagrams are how we can uh, represent the uh, capacity of a certain uh, column section. And the curve, which we'll develop, is our capacity curve. So any point, uh, any load combination inside the curve uh, will not cause failure, but any point lying outside the curve uh, would cause failure. Uh, so this is a, a way that we can uh, check the capacity of our column uh, with several different uh, load combinations um, on it.